Hello, friends and creators. Hope you're having a sunshiny day. I'm excited that I finished my little mini documentary about stitching and binding. Make sure to check it out here if you haven't. It shows the evolution, my evolution of what I discovered to be my favorite way to bind my journals. This video, I hope to be a short and fun way to show you that technique. Now, I learned everything off of YouTube. There are many creators out there who can discuss binding and stitching with you, but this is just my way. Maybe it will be helpful. So this technique will show you how to do a hollow spine binding. So to go through the binding process, I'm gonna assume you already have signatures and something to bind the signatures to. I choose my inside cover paper and I create the inside cover and I stitch my signatures to the center of the inside cover. Sometimes I reinforce the back of the inside cover. It's probably a good idea, especially if you're just using scrapbook paper like I am. The first thing I wanna do is determine how wide I need the binding to be. And since these have kind of been sitting for a while in a rubber band, they've kind of found their thickness. And I'm gonna stitch it on to the paper I chose for the inside back cover, but I wanna reinforce where the stitching is going to be. So I have just a piece of chipboard. If you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you know this comes from my uh, canned cat food. It's the chipboard they put between the stacks of canned cat food. Yeah, so real scientific way of measuring, right? I put the signatures on top of that piece of chipboard. Move this so you have a little bit of contrast maybe. Grab my pencil and I don't, you don't want to go right into the edge because, you know, it has that natural curve. So just eyeball it. You want to give it a little bit of an overhang. You want the book to breathe. A nice workout for your little paper cutter. <laughs> Crooked as ever. Crooked as ever. Don't care. <laughs> It'll still work even though that ends a little bit narrower. You got to remember, I'm not, these are not archival classic novels or anything. This is my art journal. <laughs> Wonky is okay. Imperfect is fabulous. All right. My inside cover is already cut to size. But what I do is I find the center. Crease it. I don't care. That's fine. And then you can find the center of this chipboard that you just did. And we're going to glue that on the back. So that's going to reinforce this page, right? Because essentially this is going to be sewn in here. So traditionally, when I determine, or maybe when most people binding a book, determine where to put, like I'm going to give this only three holes to stitch, you would kind of want to mark, they're all going to get all here, 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 and here, all lined up. But what I've found with creating these journals, let's find the center. Let's just say, for instance, like this is going to be stitched. You know, 
That's the one thing to consider when you're working on a centerfold because there's going to be stitching. <clears throat> Let's look at another centerfold. Yeah, this one's pretty. I can put the stitches anywhere. But you see what I'm getting at, depending on what artwork I have in the art journal is going to determine where I'm going to want to punch those holes. I guess this one won't be too bad. It's not like the stitching is so thick. And this page is okay. So I'm going to go signature by signature rather than marking along the spine. And you always want an odd number of holes. I used to do five. In my later books, I was only doing three. So in the past, when I've put the holes in the center, I've used this tool. And I hope you can see. Th these can get pretty thick. So my little hole punching tool here has actually been bent <laughs> and bent back in the position. Um, so lately, oh. I've been using this puppy here and using the one ace hole, maybe half inch. Right, these books are five inches tall, right? Set that guide two and a half for the one inch hole setting. Then I should be able to slide this in here. See, oh, look, it found, it found center. <laughs> this is a single signature. And since it has a center fold with the pumpkins, I would rather not, um, Put a stitch down the center of here and it it turns out that this little add-on journaling card that i glued to this page as a fold out i measured it and the center punch will land at a good spot here so instead of ruining this i'm going to punch the holes here all right so all the holes are punched and all the signatures these have had a little chance to dry while I did that. I'm going to start with the back signature. Open it up to center. And lay it out where I want it to be sewn. I'll use a ruler to draw straight lines to try and keep my stitches even up and down keep my signatures from moving as i'm flipping in and out in and out like that oh the tone of my voice changes when i'm describing these things the holes are really wonky <laughs> They don't go in a straight line on this one. They ain't in. I was thinking of using the thread, but I'm going to go with this white yarn. It's just going to be easier. Like, how do I measure? One, two, three is probably enough. More than enough. Four, five. Let's go with five times around. Just to be safe. Okay, when it comes to stitching, I thought I would show you using a little diagram as opposed to showing you how I do it in my journals. Okay, I'm going to draw a diagram on the paper with a line down the center showing the spine area of the book with the right side being the inside pages and the left side being outside the book. So let's just say this blue marker line that I'm making 
with a dotted line or a dashed line. This is just going to represent that part of the books with this side being inside and this side being outside the book. Okay. When you have your signatures, you're going to want to find your center at least. Okay, that's why I folded this paper in half. You'll take your measurements on your signature to find the middle. And that's where you're going to punch your first hole. Then, based on the rest of the length of your signature, or if you're doing it the way I've been doing it recently, where I've already put artwork in the journal, and now maybe the centerfold page has some artwork in there you want to adjust where you're putting your holes, that's totally fine. You have that flexibility. You're going to decide where to punch your other holes to make your stitching. And you always want an odd number. So let's just say we're going to do five holes. So you'll measure out one, two, three, four, five holes to stitch your signatures and bind them. I'll use the red marker to represent the thread. You always start on the inside of your signatures, right? You wake up in the morning, you're inside your house. So you're always going to start inside before you go outside. I usually tape down my tail of my thread, right? Here's a little piece of tape here to hold the thread down. And I go through the center hole. Always center yourself. Start at the center. Go through the center hole. Outside. And at, once you're outside, it doesn't matter whether you go up the spine or down the spine. Right? But you go outside and you pick the next closest hole. Go in. Back into the inside. Keep continuing up. Go back outside, come back down. Very simple. But in, I'm out of the camera now. <laughs> back out, back up, back into the center, and out. Okay? So now you have your thread on the inside, and then the thread, the needle will be here, right? Little needle. <laughs> That's the needle. <laughs> so always start from the middle and the inside. Right there and there. Great. When you cut the string longer, it just makes things feasible. Leave yourself enough. I could wrap it around here so you don't accidentally pull it all the way through. Right? So inside, middle. Then you can go top or bottom. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go top. I'm going to go in. Okay. <laughs> I love how it's walking. Back down the middle. Down. In. Okay. Everybody nice and tight. Back it down the middle. Okay, so now you essentially have an ear on this side and an ear on this side, right? And you kind of want to tie a knot. Well, before you do that, go under. 
under. Right, and before the loop disappears, get your needle in there so it ties a knot on this side. Okay, then go back in the middle. So what's nice about having big holes. Okay, it can pull the knot through. That's fine, because now you have your two ears. All right, let's get this guy off of here. Well, out of the way. Yep, he's in there nice and tight. Usually what I do is I do another round of under. Under. Under on this side. And before the loop disappears, actually I think I'm gonna go under here for more time. Yep, and before that loop disappears, thread the needle through. And tie a knot. Now let's just say you pulled the thread through and lost the loop. Don't go crazy. Stick your needle under a stitch again and just create another loop. <laughs> I've done it many times. And again, this is not formal book binding. This is enjoyable. Let's have fun stitching our junk journal together. <laughs> We want to pull the whole thing through now, so the knot is on this side. Just pull. Yes. See? The knot came through the hole. And once it's through the hole, you can also pull your other ear through. If you want to figure out which string it is. There. Grab it with the tweezers. Push. You hear professional bindery people being like, what is she doing? I'm playing. I'm playing. This is me playing. You can be really paranoid about the knot. Where's all my fishermen? The one, my husband has done macrame and tatting. He could teach me knots. And once all your signatures are done, for even more peace of mind, you have a piece of scrap paper, the width and height of your spine, and glue it to the back to secure all those knots. I like to glue right on the spine so that I know I'm kind of securing the stitches. And I'll go right up into the holes. And make sure to go right up to the edges. Okay, guys. Well, this journey and adventure continues in another video that I've actually made and published already. Uh, but I'm so happy to finally show you the stitching and how I get the stitching done. But now, go ahead over to this video to see how I take those stitched bindings, those stitched signatures, and uh, attach them to the covers. 
You'll watch me do October, November, and December of 2023. I hope this was helpful. Remember, have fun with this. These are junk journals, art journals. Don't take it too seriously. Laugh at life. Laugh a lot.